Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. Okay, let's get to creating some pretty decor pieces for springtime. This piece right here was something I found at our old house up in the attic. So this was free to me. It was wood color and through the years I have painted it and used it for different projects. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this beautiful transfer book right here and I'll make sure to link it down below. I went over in my piece and I refreshed it with a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Since I'm working with two sheets out of the transfer book and I want them to line up evenly, I'm just going to cut the edge, the excess paper off each edge of the paper. Working with transfer sheets is really easy because they give you grid marks, so it's really easy to keep your sheets aligned. So I'm just going to get this lined up in the center of my piece, and basically what I'm making is just a shelf sitter type sign. But this is a large piece, but I think it would be beautiful with this transfer. Now I'm just going to apply a little bit of painter's tape at the top, make sure I've got my piece secured down. You want to remove the white backing and then just go over it with your, your application tool that they give you and just apply it. Once I get that side applied, I'm going to go over and do the same thing to the other side, making sure I've got it lined up to the one that I just put down. Now these sheets right here are absolutely beautiful and I love this design. It's got some very pretty florals on it and some really pretty French uh, writing. So I thought this made a great piece that I can sit out now for spring and summertime. I want to give a huge thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. I don't know if you've ever played June's Journey. If not, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. I'm also going to have a link where you can download the app down in my description box. It's absolutely free to download the app and you can play it on a mobile device or also on a PC. June's Journey is a really fun mystery game. You go around to different scenes and you pick out clues. The thing I love about June's Journey is it is my style. It is set in a vintage style setting and some of the clues it gives you is pearls, fingernail polish, shoes, purses, tiaras. Those are my kind of things. So this game, when I started playing it, it was so easy. But each time you look at a screen, you will see different things each time. So each time I go through it, I just want to play it again and again. And being on social media, a lot of times I need a diversion at the end of the day just to give my mind and body a break from the normal routine. So make sure to go down, check out my description box in the pinned comment, download the app, and play June's Journey for yourself. I think you'll enjoy it and love it as much as I do. All right, let's make some more pretty spring decor. I'm gonna take this gorgeous decoupage paper and I'm gonna have it linked down below, but it's called Zara. I've had it for a, a couple of years and I did not know exactly what I wanted to put it on, but now I have decided. I have a couple of vintage windows that I got at an antique store and a few years ago, I mod podged some cow prints on them. Well, as you can see over the years, those cow prints have yellowed and now they need a refresh. This piece of decoupage paper is very large and that's why I've kept it so long because I needed the perfect piece to put it on and this vintage window is going to be perfect. It fits in it really well. So this is more of a thick mesh type decoupage paper. It's not thin so it actually works really well. But the first thing you want to do is press out any wrinkles and now I'm going to show you how well it's going to fit in my window. 
The top and the bottom are going to fit perfect. I am going to have to trim some off the sides, but first I'm going to apply a liberal amount of DIY liquid patina. And as you can see, you always want to start out with a white background, especially if you have a decoupage paper you can see through. It just makes, if you have a white background, it makes your decoupage paper, the design on it just pop with a white background. Now I'm going to go in and you want to press it out and work it on your, your project as best you can getting out any air bubbles or wrinkles. And I love using a brayer for this technique. Now once I got it laid down as good as I could and as flat as I could, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to score the edges and make a straight line and then I'm going to trim that off. Once I got my edges trimmed down, I'm just going to work them down into those sides just to work them in to where they will lay flat. And I'm just going to keep applying my DIY liquid patina as I need it. And like I say, you want to put liberal amounts on here just to make it stick really good and adhere to your base. Again, I'm just going to roll over it with my brayer and just keep flattening it out and working out those wrinkles. And I'm going to go over now and do the other side. And like I always tell y'all, when you work with decoupage paper, work in sections. And especially when you got a big project like this, do one side, get it down like you want it, and then go over and do the other side. I think this decoupage paper worked out perfect for this vintage window, and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I love the colors in this, so make sure to go down to my description box, get this decoupage paper, and especially if you've got some vintage windows or a large project you can put it on, it makes a beautiful design for spring and summer. Okay, y'all, I hope y'all like that first window project because we're going to do another one. I had two vintage windows that I put those cow pictures on, but on this one, I'm going to use a transfer. Now, this is a very large transfer, and I use part of it in a fall DIY project, so I've got some of this transfer left over, and it's going to work perfect on this window. First thing I want to do is I want to prepare it because I'm going to paint it on the back and then I'm going to put the transfer on the front of the glass. I'm just using some window cleaner and the razor blade that I got linked in my Amazon store. Once I got the glass clean, then I just sprayed some Rust-Oleum flat white spray paint on the back of the glass. Now you can spray paint the glass or you can use a brush and brush it on. You will need to put enough layers of paint on that glass that it is not, you can't see through it when you put it up in the light and it's not transparent. Once you've got a good paint coverage on the back of your glass, now on the front of the glass, we want to add our transfer. And like I told y'all, this is part of that really big transfer. I use the top part with a little pickup truck on a fall uh, DIY project and this didn't fit, but I'm glad it didn't because it works perfect now to make a really great spring wall decor piece. Since this transfer was so large, I decided to cut it up and work with it in sections. But this is totally up to you. But a lot of times when I have a large transfer, if I cut it in sections and work that way, it's easier. Just make sure you align your sections back together. And that way, once you apply them, they will all line up. But to me, like I say, this is the easiest way, but you can do it all in one piece if you prefer. Now transfers apply to glass really well. So this transfer went on really good. And like I say, just be patient with it and just work it in sections. And now you've got a beautiful piece to display for spring and summer. Hey, I wish you could see yourself sitting there on my chair I'm staring at you you don't even notice should have told you straight away you don't have to be
another decor piece that I picked up recently at a thrift store and just want to bring this to y'all's attention in case you see things out like this because I almost didn't pick this piece up because I wasn't sure how to use it or what it was but I only paid $2.99 for it and my friend Stephen saw a reel that I had made of my thrift store shopping trip and he said I hope you picked that piece up because that would make a great hat stand. <laughs> So here you go. So if you see a piece like this, here's an idea and some inspiration of something of how you can display it. Put your spring hats on it. Hey, I wish I could show you more. Cause baby, you deserve some more. The next project's a really fun one. And y'all, I've already upcycled these little boots. I always tell y'all, when y'all see rubber rain boots out at yard sales or thrift stores, pick those up. Last year, I did a DIY project with them, and I painted them white. This year, I'm going to paint them pink, and I painted them with T-Rose by Dixie Belle chalk paint. And that's all I'm going to do to these. You could go over them with some wax, even some white wax if you wanted to. You can add some bows to these. You could even add some transfers. But I'm just showing you how well it goes with the sign that we made with some beautiful white florals that I picked up. You just stick those in there in rain boots or any kind of boots. Y'all know I have some cowgirl boots in my bedroom. They make great vases for our florals and our greenery. Another fun project that I made, and this is so inexpensive, you just want to get a wreath form from Dollar Tree or maybe Dollar General or Walmart, and you just want to poke holes in it with a pencil. I'm using some hydrangea heads. These I have linked in my Amazon store, and I've got them in three colors. I've got some more coming on the way. I've already ordered 30 more because I'm going to make some more wreaths and some more spring decor out of them. But these are beautiful. So you don't need the stems on these. Just poke a hole with a pencil. Go around the wreath form. Secure those in the little holes with a little bit of hot glue. And on mine, I am transitioning mine. I'm doing two different colors and I'm making a little two-tone. Now I ran out of the one that's kind of the cream color. So you can see in the upper right hand, there is one that's a little bit darker. I have some more coming, so I will replace it as soon as they arrive. But I just still wanted to bring this idea along to y'all. This race right here probably didn't take me more than five to 10 minutes to make. So easy to make and it's so budget friendly. You so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of you. Another fun and unique project to work on is vintage clocks. I love to make and go on Pinterest and look at altered vintage clocks. You basically just want to take an old clock, and I got a whole box at a yard sale for $2. I went through them, and I'm going to use this one. I'm just going to give you an idea of how you can take all the things out of the clock. You just kind of want to gut it, and you just want to go around and unscrew everything that you can, and that way you can get the back off of it, and then you can get the insides out. And that's what I did with this one. After I removed the legs, I really didn't have to, so one leg... I took off and the other one I just left on. Now I'm just going to lift that part out. I'm not going to use it. You could if you wanted to. You can really do this little clock any way you want to. But I'm just going to clean it up really good. I'm going to apply some white linen chalk paint. I put a couple of layers on it. Once it dries, now I'm going to take the back of the clock. I'm going to trace around on a piece of poster board. I'm going to cut out a circle. Because what we're going to want to do is we're going to take a glue stick and we're going to glue this onto the surface of the back of that clock. Since it's got, you know, an indention in the center, I want the top of this to be flat. Because I'm going to take a, a piece of decoupage paper and I want to apply it to this circle. Now this decoupage paper I'll have linked down below. 
I'll give you a website of where I get all of mine. But I had originally was going to work on a different project with it, so that's why it's cut in a circle. But I think it'll fit fine on this project, and it's got a little bit of florals there on the side. And then I'm going to go in in the center of it, and I'm going to add a transfer. Now I'm going to put all the transfers that I use in today's um, video. I'll put those down in the description. But I always have transfers on hand, and it's a great way to really add another detail to your projects. Now I went around with a sanding block and I just smoothed out the edges of the back of my clock. Now I'm going to apply this transfer just to give it a little bit more detail and then we'll put it back on the clock. Now when you get this on the, on the back of your clock and you've got this now to work with, now this is where you can have fun with this. You can put mixed media in your clock, you can put bird nests, uh, you could take Easter eggs, little rabbits. You can really thing this little clock any way you want to. You can put a bow on the top, but I'm taking some little flowers that I got at um, Hobby Lobby on the wedding aisle. I'm just applying those with a little bit of hot glue. I'm just going to put a little bit of Easter grass in it, trim it up, and I'm just going to put three little eggs in it. Just giving you ideas of how you can upcycle and make great little projects out of, out of old clocks. Now before I style the clock, I'm going to show you a couple of pieces that I found at the thrift store. Now the times that I find Easter or spring decor is not around this time of the year. It's usually in the fall and Christmas time. But I did pick these up a few months ago and I'm glad I did. Because this time of the year, that's when people are going to be looking at the thrift store for this type of stuff. So always throughout the year, look for your different seasons. Even though it's not that season, just be out looking for it. I just found that cute little rabbit planter. I put some little Dollar Tree roses in it. And then this cute little bunny right here was only 99 cents. And I thought he went so cute with my little vintage clock. Wondering if you're thinking about me too. Now it's too late. Now it's too late. I'm out of time. But I'm still thinking of you. Okay, y'all, we are coming toward the end of the video. It's almost time to tell y'all goodbye, but I hope you enjoyed the video today and seeing some ways that we can take some items that maybe you have around your home, you just want to refresh them, or maybe some items you've picked up out yard selling or at a thrift store. Just ways of how we can recycle those and reuse them and make beautiful decor for our home. Don't forget, I'm gonna leave a link to how you can download June's Journey down in my description and also in a pinned comment. I hope y'all go out, download the app, play it. I think you will love it. I know I do. Make sure to follow me on all the social medias. I'm on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, and I'm also over on Pinterest. Make sure if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you did. It always helps out my channel. And make sure if you know someone that would love this video, and enjoy it. Make sure to share it with your friends and family. As always, I appreciate y'all. I love you, and I'll see you next week.